So it's a day three. France against Australia, the opening game of the day. We have the 1998 world champions. They topped a group involving Sweden and the Netherlands. Even though that they ended up four points clear of Sweden, they dropped points at home to Luxembourg and drew at Belarus. They have undoubted talents in players like Griezmann, Pogba and Mbappe. Their coach Deschamps, who took them to the, nine, to the um, Euro finals on home soil about two years ago, has a contract until 2020. So if, interestingly, the French have, have, have only 14 players of the current squad that have played in major tournaments. They only scored 18 goals during the qualifiers. They've only won one opening game in the last four attempts at the World Cup. They'd only won three games in the group stages over the last four years, none in 2002. One in 2006, none in 2010, and two in 2014. For Australia, appearing in their fourth ever World Cup tournament, no, their fourth straight tournament, they arrived in a state of flux. The, the manager that get um the um that they qualified who enabled them to, who guided them through qualification like posta Coglu, he resigned and immediately once they qualified M matt van matt um van Marwijk, the, the dutchman who guided saudi arabia is been brought in to become the interim manager for, for four games for um yeah just i think he'd had four games been coached for four games and he took them on a 20 day um, training camp in Turkey. The coach who will precede him, who will, who's going to um, take over after the tournament is a gentleman called Graham Arnold. Austria, so they qualified, finished the hard way, finishing third behind Japan and Saudi Arabia. They went into two two-legged um, like quali um, one-off games firstly against Syria who they defeated and then they ended it by beating Honduras in the intercontinental um, the playoff so they have a star their star player who plays in the English Premiership it's Aaron Moy of, who did very well for Huddersfield they yeah who did very well so they looked look to this him to really provide something special. In terms of the game, so now looking at the game, Australia, there was a, a very immediate warning as Mbappe ran through to force a save, a near post save. France were looking slick, evidently the possession was theirs. Australia denying space, moving from side to side, there were no surprises. Uh, they Almost shot France on 16 minutes. Lorez falls into a low save after the deflection off the foot of his own player. Austria, they slowly started to look very comfortable. The French were looking like back, they were backpedaling, slow laboured, they weren't using width, not pressing the ball. And yeah, and Australia grew in confidence, they stood tight. And totally untroubled by the French. There was nothing really the French really needed to improve. They were very predictable, lacking quality. They, the width, as I mentioned, was, was virtually non existent. And deservedly, Australia went in at half time on level terms. They were compact, playing tight, there, there were no gaps, moving in sync, picking up the second balls. So it looked very promising for the start of the second half. France, like playing three upfield, still didn't make any inroads, for, at least for the first 15 minutes. And then what seemed a very good tackle from Risden was, was deemed um, a foul. And play was brought back and the referee went and used VAR and came to the, he came to the decision and that France were deserved the penalty and a penalty was awarded and Griezmann who uh, hadn't hadn't really scored that many goals he did
didn't score any goals in Brazil. He was a top scorer at the Euros about two years ago. He stepped up to dispatch his 21st goal in 55 internationals. So France, seemingly, were on their way. Yeah, so it was very unfortunate. It was very contentious. There were lots of opinions whether it was a penalty or it wasn't a penalty. And very soon, uh, Griezmann almost made it 2-0, but, but they, um, yeah, Australia survived. But it was, if the VARs was required, had been required for the first, there was definitely no doubt about the second contentious decision. Well, the second like, penalty award in which Mtiti inexplicably raised his arms and handled the, um, the ball and a penalty award was the in, in this undisputed decision and Zedanek, the, the captain who scored in the last World Cup did the same again to bring Australia on level terms and deserved and deservedly so. Lores sent the um the wrong way. And Deschamps I think had had enough. He brought on Fekir and Giroud for um uh Dembele and Griezmann who yeah and Mbappe was left on the field and France somehow regained the lead when Pogba slickly played the ball, played the one two as he went to make connection. He's made he's connected and the ball was come spinning off the Australian off the leg and over the keeper, bounced onto the crossbar and crossed the line and the goal was given, correctly given, and France had their lead. And it was very unfortunate that it came off a leg of Bates, I believe. Australia pressed, France just ran down the clock and five minutes of stoppage time were played. But the win was France's, gallantly Australia had lost. But there was plenty of hope and there was that they could turn this around and compete in their next two um, final games. France were very fortunate and they really needed to really needed to up their game if they were to progress any further in this tournament.